with an average age of 19 years old, UCD Dublin are the youngest team in world football. And this is because they are a college. Only students from this college can play in the team. And somehow for years, they have managed to stay up in the Irish top division until this year where they were relegated, meaning they will not be in FC 25. So today we are gonna rebuild the youngest team in world football, but I am keeping with their admissions tradition. I can only sign players that are 17 or younger. And that's not just for the first season, that's for the entire rebuild. This may be one of the toughest challenges I'll ever do. And I mean, not only is it tough because we can only sign 17 year olds or younger, we can also, like we have a terrible side to start off. The Irish league is one of the worst, if not the worst in the game overall wise. And we've taken over the worst rated team in that league. And I mean, you look at this squad, so many youngsters, a few mature age students as well in the mix. I can keep them in the squad, but let's be real. None of them are really gonna help us out too much. Let the fun begin. And with our transfer budget being as low as it is, we need to strike the perfect balance here in the opening seasons of saving money and spending our money wisely, but also laying the foundation that can help us long term. We've got the luxury of having a rough idea of players' potentials in the early seasons. When it gets two, three years in, it's going to be pure regens and youth academy kids. So we need to sign at least the foundations early on here. And by good foundations, I mean 52 rated right midfielders in Harvey Watts. I'm also going to sign this American center midfielder here, Jonathan Shaw, joining us from New York City FC for £100,000. 50 overall to join our central midfield position 15 years of age though we're gonna get we're gonna go worse before we get good at least that's what i'm telling myself to stay away from pure insanity i will be processing some students and players for early graduation though donald higgins will be going to cork city alex dunn to sc verl kieran bian to crawley town mark dignam to alisons and finally michael gallagher to cork city it wouldn't be a monster revealed like this though without me signing an australian player so we're gonna pick up the attacking midfielder here, Jalen Pierman, who is going to join us from the Perth Glory. He signs on for £160,000. So this is how the starting 11 looks. Our opening transfer window in the books. I don't expect much from us. Like I said, we've taken some downgrades in certain positions, but with players that have much higher potential. I've just got to bank on these guys. I've kept a bit of money to see if we can do some summer admissions to the college. Because in the Irish League, we began things off in January. So now we're in February 2020. 23. That's the nice part about starting in Ireland. We start a little bit before the normal European clubs. We need to use that extra six months to our advantage. Yeah, we cannot even be thinking about a Champions League title for a very long time. We are bottom of the Irish League halfway through the season. Nine points. We need to do some business here because I don't want us to get off too slow of a start that it destroys the players we've signed dynamic player potentials. And so many of the lads want out of the club. Like, I wanted to keep clean Clancy is the starting center back for a while, but all these guys want to dip and I don't blame them. Would this technically make them college dropouts though? All right, you know what? I'm going to sell some guys here, raise some cash and try making a massive signing for our standards. Evan or Sam heading to Tromso. And there we go, fellas. We get ourselves a new starting center back. It's our highest rated signing to date. Our most expensive as well. Alexander Kjelsen, the Norwegian defender, joining us here. It's a nice moment when you actually get the cutscene. The players we've been signing before this have been so low rated that we haven't got this transfer news cutscene. Finally getting it. But will he be enough to get us off the bottom of the table? Nope, it is not. But we have had a better second half of the year. At least we only finished three points behind Cork City. So I think for season number two, our objective has to be getting off the bottom of the table. St. Pat's do win the Irish cup and at this point i know we're on an inverted schedule but i'm not even looking at european football until we get ourselves into contention for me the most important thing is seeing players performing on the pitch our strikers sharing the love there kinsella bishop doyle and gill all getting half decent seasons i'm happy to see harvey watts getting plus three in his first year not as many appearances for Shaw or pierman though as i'd hoped we're gonna have to be cutthroat next year as it's really our last 
opportunity to sign real players. We have maybe next year a couple of people in season three, but we need to make next year a crucial one. First man out this season, say your goodbyes to Jesse Dempsey, but say your hellos to Louis Giles, the Welsh left back joining us from Cardiff City. I will make sure I show it as well, but he is 17 years of age. Also, I've made sure I check the free agents list for players 17 and younger. Only five regens in there, so I'm hoping for more players coming in the next few years that are actually quality. Brendan Barr, the latest player out, £130,000 for him. And my big goal, I want to spend basically our entire budget right now on a new centre midfielder. We've sold Brennan, that means there's an opening in the centre midfield role. I'm going to get rid of Adam Verdon though, another centre midfielder, so that we can get him straight in the starting 11 and get more cash. There we go, fellas. That is a massive one over the line. Joshua King is going to join us. It's a famous footballing name, but we've got ourselves a new king in the midfield. He joins us from Fulham for £900,000. We only had a month to work with here to start season number two, and I'm keeping it at that. This is what the starting 11 looks like. Obviously, King comes in, and he's our star player by a country mile. I'm very excited to see if he can help lift us off the bottom of the table here in season two. Come on now. So far, so good. It's currently sitting sixth. We're only seven points clear, but we are still sitting sixth. It's the first time in the entire video that we've been on the bottom, off the bottom of the table here. Already equaled as many wins as we got as the entirety of last season. I don't think we're a chance of getting into the top three, but these are great signs. With only 90k in our transfer budget though, I am leaving it at that this window. Interesting. Okay, I've just been going through. I just want to have a look at who's around. There are actually players that aren't free agents coming onto the database but for bigger clubs so i'm gonna have to do some especially when we get more money i'm gonna have to do some really in-depth scouting every single year and see if we can pick up some absolute bargains imagine if i managed to get endrick i mean i can't i don't have 20 mil amazing that is that is incredible we have set our goal not to finish bottom of the league in season two and we have done it comfortably. Sixth place here with UCD. I say we start thinking about the top of the table. Shamrock winning the league here. Derry City won it last year. But I'm starting to finally have some optimism with this under-17s team. It would be nice if we could win the cup, though. We, we went out in the quarterfinals. And Joshua King, in his first year here, gets the golden boot. Six assists, 11 goals, 17 goal contributions. We probably might have to look at getting a new striker in, though. Kinsella Bishop's getting it done on the pass. Arc, but long term, I think we're better off investing in somebody and getting them the reps right now while there's minimal pressure on Doyle. He could be that man. I'm not sure, man. I just want the growth to get up with the lads. Kielsen up to a 64, though. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Season three may be a massive turning point, though, because a lot of our options are now going to turn into regen players rather than real life players. So we're going to be sharp. Bring it on. Season three with UCD Dublin. I'm so upset, lads. I thought I had struck gold here. I found this dude, Jordan Tremblay, an American center back, 72 rated at age 17. But Genoa have beaten us out to sign him. That is so frustrating, man. He was market valued at 3.4 mil. But we have got ourselves our first free agent signing. 16 year old Irish goalkeeper. I really want to make sure I'm trying to get at least one or two Irish players into the squad where I can. Darren Quigley is going to join us as our new starting goalkeeper. I absolutely plan on trying to get the highest rated players I can off free agency. I don't care if Messi's regen pops up. I don't care if you guys think it's unrealistic. I will be going in freezer. But I need the money in here. There is a player specifically that I need the money if I want to sign him. So to help finance that, we are saying thank you, but goodbye to Ryan Bowden. This isn't the guy that I was talking about, but this is an awesome pickup here. We might have missed out on Tremble the American, but we have picked up Vasco da Silva, 17-year-old Portuguese defender, 67 overall. I'm telling you, lads, we might be able to get this process sped up a lot more than first anticipated if we can find these, continually find players like da Silva. No! Oh, you are kidding me. The man that I wanted to sign, Bailey De Pepper has just turned 18. Oh my God, he's just gone from 17 to 18 years of age. So we're gonna have to remove him from the shortlist. Every time I say that stuff, I sound like Dr. Disrespect. We need to act quick before my second choice striker turns 18. Kyle Donahue, we're selling him 200,000 extra pounds in the back pocket. Clancy heads to Bohemians for 210,000 pounds. And I'm hoping that this should surely be enough to get it over the line. But it is our starting striker, Kinsella Bishop. I'm 
selling him permanently. You guys might be able to figure out what position I want to upgrade at. Well, I mean, you should definitely be able to figure it out because I said it before, but I'm going to try signing this guy, Jonah Kusi Asare from Bayern Munich. He's got a game face. That's an automatic plus for me. 17 years of age, young Swede. Let's see if he wants some more game time with us. So it says we should be able to get him for about a million pounds here. I want that to become a reality. Let's offer up a million pounds here. Thomas Tuchel still wearing the Bayern Munich outfit in this update and he accepts it straight away. Need to get this one over the line right now, fellas, before the January transfer window closes. He might be one of our final players that we sign that is a real life player. Five year deals, perfect for me. Yeah, this is all gone perfectly. I'm going to accept that. And we bag ourselves a new striker in Jonah Kusi Asare. I'm excited for this kid. What a massively beneficial transfer window that was. Our squad has been taken to the next level. And I tell you what, lads, the pressure is on for some of our season one signings. They are already lagging behind these season three signings. I was not expecting to be eighth right now. I genuinely thought that we could push ourselves up for like a top three finish, but this start of the season has been horrible. We're only 10 points away from the top three though. So there is still hope for the second half of season number three. We are going to go in for this young Japanese attacking midfielder though, Yoshi Sakai, 17 years of age. He's going to be a backup attacking midfielder, but I'm just thinking even if he doesn't develop into somebody half decent, we can just sell him on for money and hopefully that can help us in the future. Yoshi Sakai, welcome to UCD. You know what? I'm actually going to throw him up on the loan list here and see if we can get a move for him here in the summer transfer window and get him at least a little bit of growth. I'm going to do the same thing here with our former starting keeper more. I don't want him to become disgruntled and I want to see if we can squeeze a little bit more out of his lemon. So there we go. We get a loan move for Sakai. He's off to the Saudi league other club for the next two years. And there we go, fellas. Moore's lemon has been squeezed. He's heading just on a short loan move here to Rapid. I'm fighting myself so hard right now not to call that short term loan move a rapid loan. Come on. We finished third now in the Irish league. I think it's time for me to start checking how European football has been going, but I believe that means we're going to be in the conference league playoffs in season number four. I'm hoping most importantly though, that means our transfer budget is raised just a little bit. Only seven points away from the title as well. That needs to be the goal moving forward. And I'm going to be cutting the slack with some of the players that haven't been developing as much as we hoped. There's been players that have definitely been going pretty easy on because I want to give them the opportunity. That time has passed. We're about to turn this up to the next level in season four. But back here in season three, we made it to the semi-finals of the League Cup. Oh, I can't even check how European football's... D damn, that means we're not even going to get to play European football until the back half of next year. I'm going to try my best to check in on how these tournaments are going halfway through the season. But one thing I can check in on right now is the growth and the performances of some of our top players. Jonah Kusiasare has had an awesome first year at Dublin. Joshua King up to a 69 overall now. Harvey Watts stepping up in a make or break season. Jalen Pearman, I'm not sure. I'll probably look for some loan moves for him next year though. I'm frustrated. Like, okay, I, I expect our budget isn't going to be insane in this rebuild, at least not until the later stages because we're with such a club like Dublin. But only having a million pounds has cost us massively because whilst trying to find an attacking midfielder to sign, we're going to have to miss out on this kid. Alex Correa. Number one, I'm not sure if he'd even want to leave Real Madrid for Dublin, but we don't even have the opportunity. 83 rated, 17 year old. You don't stumble upon these types of talents too often. So instead, we're going to get ourselves this young fella, Theodore Sanchez. Frenchman, 17 years of age, attacking midfielder, 65 overall. That's a massive upgrade on Pearman. It's not quite Correa though, is it? And we're going in for a new center midfielder as well. Getting a few Portuguese players in this squad, but it is Alfonso. Alfonso Moreira, again, 65 overall, 17 years of age, exact same as Theodore Sanchez. Like I said, we're not playing around this year. We're getting big players in. I want to get a big upgrade at the left midfield position. I've got my man shortlisted, but we need a little more money. Jake Doyle, our former backup striker, heads to Dunkirk. But we've just received our highest transfer sack.
sales so far. Danny Norris is heading to Catanzaro, 620,000 pounds. I was on the fence about selling him. He's developing okay. We've got Tottenham coming in for Joshua King. We're on the right direction with him. We need to hold on to him. But any fears I had about selling Doyle being the wrong decision fade away very quickly when I see Tommy Austin, 17 year old Australian left midfielder. We sign him. It's from Sydney FC. I've rescued him from Sydney FC and we've brought him across here to Dublin. 1.2 mil. His value goes up and so does his overall. I mean, it could be the regen of my friend and fellow creator, Mitch Austin. He was a left midfielder. He played at Sydney FC. He's not as fast as Mitch Austin though. Regardless though, Tommy Austin, welcome to Dublin. Gonna sign a back up left back here. I'm not gonna lie. I have had a mare. This guy's still a good signing, but the whole reason I signed him is because, oh, that is actually, I am actually embarrassed. I saw the flag when I was going through all the available left backs and saw the orange, white, and green and straight away went, oh, okay, he's an Irish left back. Let's sign him. Let's get some more Irish players in here. He's from the Ivory Coast. Oh my God, I've had a mare. Regardless though, we're gonna welcome him with open arms. Fabrice Sinogo. Well, that is the least Irish name. Oh my, what am I doing? Fabrice and Ogo, welcome to Dublin. We need to be pushing for the title this year, lads. We need to. This team is developing so nicely, but I want as many players as possible getting into the 70s. I want to start getting into European football. We're like, near, we're zero chance of winning it. But if we can at least get this exposure, get the money so that we can sign some more exciting wonder kids. With Shaw falling out of the starting 11 though, I'm not ready to give up on him quite yet. So when the summer window opens, he's going to be going on a two year loan move. Come on now, we're in the title race, lads. Second, but this is going to be so tight. You can see Shamrock only two points behind us in fifth. So we need to make sure we continue getting wins here and convert those damn draws into wins. I forgot to check. I forgot to check who won the chair. All right, I need to start doing that like on the 30th of June instead of the 1st of July. But are we in the conference league qualifying round? We are. Well, we're going to be versing Dinamo Zagreb. I'll let you guys know how that goes at the end of the season. This man is the hottest prospect in town, the hottest ticket in Dublin. Joshua King, now Inter Milan want him along with United and Tottenham. I'm going to block offers for him right now, though, because we need to keep him. All right, screw it. I'm simulating through the window anyways, because I'm trying to get a loan move for Pearman. But we've got our first qualifier against Dinamo Zagreb. Let's see how it goes. It goes pretty well. A 2-1 win. All right, we might be on here, but I'll save the rest of it as a surprise for the end of the season. Now let's see if we can get a loan move for Pearman, because he is taking game time away from Theodore. And that's a negative. Nobody wanted him. We've turned it on here in the second half of the season, our climb up the Irish footballing ladder has been complete for now, but this is only the start. We don't care about winning the Irish League. We care about winning the Champions League. Ironically though, we have to win the Irish League to even get a chance to qualify for the Champions League. But we end up finishing nine points clear of Shamrock and now the standard has been set. I expect us to win the league every single year from here on. But we don't win the cup, which is quite ironic. We go out in the first round, but we ended up missing out on qualification to the Conference League. I didn't even see what happened for myself. Let me go check that out. Okay, so you can see next to my head there, there's the 2-1 win. We lost 2-1 in the the second leg and with no other games around there i'm assuming we went out on penalties because it was an even yeah we must have gone out on penalties that is frustrating tommy austin you beautiful bastard 17 goals four assists what a way to start life for the australian because csra up plus five 15 goals dynamic player potential is definitely going to be getting to him and harvey watts he was on the cusp of being relegated to the bench and me looking for an upgrade but now he's strung together a few good seasons back to back he finds himself 67 overall and hopefully just like kusiasare dynamic player potential is going to help him out king up to a 73 as well where we're making good progress, but again, we're going to have to get our budget up so we can get those massive young players in. Jonathan Shaw does go up plus three overall, though, on his loan move, so I'm excited to see what he can do with another year out on loan. But there we go. We're going to get our first shot at Champions League football and our first shot, as unrealistic as it is to win, our first shot at actually trying to win the Champions League and complete this rebuild. I'm starting the season with a maintenance signing. Xavier Bernal, young Spaniard, 17. I don't I feel like I don't need to clarify players are young anymore in this video, but Xavier Bernal joining us as a backup right midfield option. But for me, the big move I want to make this year is for the right back position. We're going to sell our former backup right back 
in Luke O'Regan to Doncaster. Finally got a loan move here though for Pannon. He's heading to Shanghai Port for the year. But we get ourselves our new starting right back here. Rafael Greco, 2.3 million pounds to bring the Italian right back across here. We've signed him from Sa Suwon Samsung in the K League. He's not necessarily someone that blows your socks off in terms of other options out there. Like I've seen regens like we saw last year with Correa who was 83 rated. But at the right back role, he was definitely the best one that we could pick up. I mean, this there was this guy, but we could not afford him. He's 16 years of age though. So I might shortlist him just in case we come into money next year. I want to try a new tactic out though. We need to get crazy amounts of money in if we're going to get the insane, insane players. So what I'm going to do here every year, I'm going to check the free agents list. Every time I see somebody that's, let's say 68 rated or higher, I'm going to try bringing them in on a free. It doesn't matter what position, loan them out and see if we can get some superstars developing here. We're going to get Jelovic, a Serbian center back, 68 rated. Alessandro Tavares, a Brazilian striker who can also play center attacking midfielder, 70 overall. And the New Zealander, 16 year old Benjamin Cox, who is 71 overall. I'm telling you, Kusia Sane might have to watch his back now. I mean, Benjamin Cox could start over him right now. He's what, four years younger? I'm going to keep Kusia Sane in though and look to get Benjamin Cox alone. But this plan might have, oh, uh, it might backfire on us. I've accepted loan offers for Cox, Yelovich, and Tavares, but none of them have gone through on deadline day. And now there is going to be a lot of competition and a lot of people fighting it out for the strike. I've, pro I've got three people in my squad that I've promised the starting striker role. All right, I need to just accept something so that as soon as the summer window opens up, we can get these three guys out. But regardless, this is what the starting 11 is going to look like. We're still in a great position. A lot of work to do if we're ever going to win a Champions League title with UCD Dublin, but we're heading in the right direction. We got him. Cox is off to Ajax on loan. Jelovic off to Heidenheim on loan. And Bazikstas is where Tavares is going to be playing. Our quest for back-to-back -back Irish League titles is not off to a great start. We're at the point where I almost expect us to be going invincible. We sit third though. And I made sure I stopped the simulation before the 1st of July. We're currently on the 27th of June. AC Milan win the Champions League. Lazio win the Europa League on a 9-8 penalty shootout. And the Conference League goes to Atalanta. But a few players have demanded they get out of the club. And we're at the point now where I don't mind selling off some of our older players. Adam Wells heading to Gillingham for 370k. And a kid who I had a lot of hope for. I was hoping we could bring him along for the whole journey, but just not growing how we wanted. And that, of course, is Daniel Babb, who we're selling for 640k. Speaking of 640k, I'm about 130,000 subscribers away from that. So if you enjoy the content and you aren't already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Gonna use that extra money, though, to sign ourselves a backup right back here in the summer transfer window. Ethan Barlow joining us on a permanent transfer from Leeds United for 600,000 pounds. For the first time, though, we're in the Champions League qualifying rounds. We're taking on AIK for the first stage. I'm hoping that we can get a similar result to what happened when we watched the simulation of the Conference League game last year. First leg the away at the Friends Arena, which is just so wholesome and so nice, but we don't deliver a result which is wholesome or nice or friendly at all. We put the smack down on AIK and we get a 3-0 first leg lead. I don't think any of us were expecting to be in this position, but we are 3-0 up as we get into the second leg against AIK and we get the draw, but that is fine by me. On to the next stage of qualifying we go. And we're heading Nordic again here for the playoff round. We've got Bodo Glimt in this second round. I believe this is the final round before the group stages. Can we get ourselves there though? Certain players are definitely a little fatigued after the fixture congestion, but the first leg at the UCD Bowl is a one-all draw. King has set this one up for a second leg showdown with an 88th minute equalizer. I've made sure we are rested and ready for this second leg. This is one of the biggest games, if not the biggest, in UCD Dublin club history. Traveling away, one all scoreline for a spot in the Champions League group stages. We are going to get there. It is our January transfer window signing. Greco, the right back, bagging us the goal. We're headed to the Champions League group stages. Oh my God. I don't... I don't think we're going to hang around too long. PSG 
Newcastle, and PSV. It does not get much harder than that. We are in the group of death, and we are clearly bottom of the batting order right now. All right, let's just simulate it. This is life in the Champions League. Let's see how we go. Hmm, that's not gone great. That's not gone well at all. We have been absolutely spanked. We've been turned around and just absolutely beaten into the earth. Not a single point with a negative 11 goal difference. That is one way to say welcome to the Champions League. Luckily though, we are headed right back in season number six because we have gone back to back as champions of the Irish League. Again, we seem to be second half of the season specialists. And finally, we have won our first Irish Cup, the FAI Cup. We win it fourth three over Shamrock. What a final that would have been. Holy hell, I was worried about how much game time he would get. Jonah Kusiasare. Yeah, all right. He's got 26 goals. He's up to a 77 overall. We are humming, lads. Austin up to a 75. Sanchez, that's a great season for him. What's stepping up. This is awesome. All right, I'm feeling good. I'm, we're, we've taken this squad to the next level. And one thing I've loved about this rebuild so far, I have lost nobody to pre-contracts or their contracts expiring, mainly because nobody's been able to be poached on a pre-contract. We're only now starting to get some guys at the 23, 24 year age marker. How did the lads go that we sent out on loan? Cox only up to a 72. Tavares doesn't even grow. What about the Serbian center back? He goes up to a 70. Not gonna lie, little disappointed. But I'm hoping we've got a fat transfer budget next year from the Champions League money, which we can use on the creme de la creme, the top 1% of regions. We have been given 9 million pounds, which is our biggest transfer budget to date. But it means almost nothing because we have hit the jackpot with free agency this year. Two or three players here that could automatically walk into the starting 11. Some insane prospects as well. I need to sign all of these guys up. There we go. Okay, fellas, with Chris Kearney accepting, we get everybody except for Kader Ahmed. We miss out on his signature, but the rest of the lads, the higher rated lads, we get all of them into the club. I've already thrown some of them up on the loan list. The ones that you can't see, basically, have already been put on the loan list. I want Cox. I want Kielsen. <laughs> Pause. I want... You want Cox, do you, Jared? You want Cox? But yeah, all these lads thrown up on the loan list. We'll see what we can make happen. Another big year on the cards. I was wanting to spend the money, but after that haul, I mean, we spent the money and we spent a little bit of money on some insane players. I'm excited to see how the ones we loaned out do, and I'm more excited to see how the likes of Figueroa, Pierce, Kaiser, and Cardozo can go in our starting 11. With the leftover money, though, I'm making sure I continue improving our, our coaches. Haven't been able to invest too much money into them, but I'm really going to take it up a level here. That is more like it, fellas. Currently invincible halfway through this Irish League season. Season. A lot of draws though. A lot of draws. I'm starting to get into the rhythm of checking the European tournaments. Real Madrid win the Champions League. New oh my, so Newcastle and PSG, who are both in our group, both made the finals. Are we going to see PSV? No, we're not. Imagine if PSV made the Conference League final. Harvey Watts is having a stinker of a season so far, and he's lagging behind the rest of the side, to be honest. So I think in this January window, I'm going in for a new right midfielder. The question is though, lads, are we going to find somebody? Well, it's not looking good. These are all of the right midfielders in the world right now in the game that are 16 or 17. Are we going to have any better luck at the right wing position? 63, 62. No, we are not. All right, that is that is not good. Watts, you've survived this time, brother. So instead, what we're going to do here is invest 3.1 million pounds into this Irish center back, Craig Neal. His value goes down, which isn't a great omen, but we're going to sign him from RC Lens. I'm putting him straight into the starting 11 because he may be lower rated than Vasco da Silva, but Vasco da Silva is kind of stunting in his growth. So I'm going to send him out on loan and see if we can reignite that. It's that time of the year though. We are heading to Cyprus, qualifying round for the Champions League. Can we get ourselves back to the group stages? I mean, given the squad we have, if we can get ourselves to the Champions League again, we might be able to give it a fair crack. We've got four players in the starting 11 that are in the 80s. Austin, not too far behind them. Let's see how we go here. First game at GSP Stadium and we go behind 3-1. That is, oh my God. It is going to take a minor miracle for us to be in the Champions League this year. 3-1 down. We need our best performance. We get our best performance. 
Oh my god. A 2-0 win. And we take it to penalties. We win on penalties against Apoel. And we are into the second round of Champions League qualification. We cannot aff not afford for it to get to this point second time round. We can't afford to sh the bed this first leg. We're on the road. Second stage of the playoffs against our house. Heading to Denmark. Come on, fellas. Get it a lot more comfortable. All right, one all. Compared to how we went against Apoel, I'll take one all. One all, bloody hell. A win here gets us back to the Champions League group stages. Sanchez running on fumes. So we need to take care of business early here. One all scoreline and we go out. We go out 2-1 after taking the lead. It's a second half capitulation. And we're not going to be playing Champions League football this year. I believe that's going to condemn us to the Europa League. Yep, Europa League it is. Sociedad, Hearts, and that Polish side, Reklau. All right, we just need to do what we can. If we can go on a Europa League run, that would be awesome. But we just need to make sure we win the league again, go invincible, and get ourselves back to the Champions League again next year. One loss all season. Oh my God, we got one loss. One loss away from an invincible campaign with UCD, but we finished 26 points clear at the top of the Irish League. Like I said, it is the expectation at this point. We don't win the FAI Cup though. We have at the bed there. And we finished third in our Europa League group. So is that going to send us to the Conference League? It is. We are going to be versing FC Basel in the Conference League preliminary rounds. Surely the lads have put up some numbers this season. Oh, Jonah gets himself 34 goal contributions. Tommy Austin is on track to become the greatest Australian footballer ever. 28 goal contributions. Theodore Sanchez has turned things around. I was debating upgrading at the attacking midfield role. King is 83 rated. I feel like in certain positions, we are not too far away. The thing is, our squad is just so inconsistent across the park. Cox... Cox doesn't get any growth. I mean, how did the rest of the lads go? Marrera only up to a 72. Quigley doesn't get any growth, but Kaiser goes up to an 80. Mate, this is not going too well for the players that we're loaning out. Kenny up to a 71. Pierce going up to a 78, though, in his first season is awesome. We definitely need a new right midfielder next year. Ruben Santos could be the answer, but I'm really disappointed about Benjamin Cox. For the first time in this video, though, we will be saying goodbye to two players at the end of the season. Fintan Agnew and Jack supple both walking away on freeze i know we only signed that irish fella in the defense last year but i found this guy a big up swedish center back by the name of adam An adam anison i think it is but this dude is 79 rated at 17 years of age he's gonna slot straight into our starting 11 here adam anderson joining us on a free we are struggling at the right midfield position i found this guy francisco santos i'm feeling okay about him a 17 18 year old Brazilian, 71 years of age. We're going to sign him in. And we've also found another center back. Center back's coming out of our ears. Uray Carrizo, 16 years of age. I'm sending both these guys straight out on loan if I can. So with us struggling to find right midfield options, I thought maybe we look at the left midfield spot, the attacking midfield spot, and see if there's somebody we can sign that can be converted to a right midfielder. And that is where we found Mustafa Niang. Now I have an inkling that this might be the Saudi Omane regen. He's a Senegalese left midfielder. We got him from the Saudi league. I don't know. It's adding up. I'm going to sign him and immediately convert him to a right midfielder, which is going to take 21 weeks. I thought it would take like two. Oh my God. All right. We'll do it anyways. We'll do it anyways. I mean, he does have the exciting prospect tag. So I'm hopeful. I am looking to clean out some of the more established names in the squad. And when I say established, I mean the Harvey O'Briens of the world and the Jamie Duggins of the world as well. With the Kiwi striker Cox not developing as much as we liked, I've gone out and I've had a chat with Chabi Alonso and I've managed to sign Edgar Fournier from Bayer Leverkusen, 2.8 million pounds, immediately going to throw him up on the loan list. Just assume basically anybody I sign at this point, unless they're a superstar signing, is going up on the loan list. But he has got the foundations of being a great footballer. Big, big, big season ahead here, ladies and gentlemen. We need our star players to really carry us here as we continue trying to grow Cardoso, Sanchez, Niang, Greco, all the guys in positions where we are lagging behind. But I'm hoping we can actually go invincible this year and actually get out of our Champions League group. First up, though, we have the Conference League playoffs. 
So I'll fill you guys in at the halfway point of the season to how we went there. Halfway through the regular season, we've copped a loss, but we're still 13 points clear at the top of the Irish League. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable there. Conference League though, we ended up beating FC Basel in the preliminary round. So we go on to the round of 16 where we beat Lens. Oh, we're on here, fellas. Quarterfinals, we lose to Brighton and Hove Albion though, 2-1. And Brighton end up making the final where they fall to Stuttgart. We're focused on the Champions League though. And if Tottenham can win a Champions League, then anything is possible. Sevilla, they win the Europa League as well. We've also sold Lennon Gill, who is heading to Cambridge United on a free. And Divine Isakor, who is heading to the Romanian League for £150,000. Finally, though, we can convert Niang to a right midfielder. He's already gone up to a 76 in the first half of the season, which is awesome to see. But as we hit triangle, he stays at 76. Now let's get his skill moves up. Hello there, Apoel. We meet again. We cannot allow it to be as much of a fight as it was last year when we played them. We lost 3-1 in the first leg to them. Do not let that happen again. Nil-nil, I will take that after last year's antics. So that now sets us up for a clash at home in Dublin. Get us through to the next stage. Please, 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 we do. Come on, lads, into the next round of qualifying again. And now we have a date with Malmo, heading away to Sweden for the first leg here. Set the foundations. Foundations have been set. Anything but a loss gets us into the Champions League group stages again. How are we gonna go? 4-0, that is the perfect way to rubber stamp ourselves into the Champions League for the third time. It's never gonna be easy. You're never gonna get an easy group when you go through the qualifying rounds. That's what we've set ourselves up for, but Arsenal, Lazio, Shakhtar, Donetsk. If we want to play knockout round football, we're going to have to get some big scalps. Come on, lads. By the skin of our teeth, one point, we go through to the Champions League knockout rounds for the first time with UCD AFC. Arsenal finishing three points above us, but we finish one point ahead of Lazio. And we're getting thrown right into the deep end. Borussia Dortmund in the round of 16 here in season seven. But we have won another Irish League title. Only four four draws all year, 91 points. Despite our domination though in the league, we are not winning many Irish Cups. Oh my God. Jonah Kusiasare goes up plus six overall. He's 89 rated. He gets 33 goals. Austin, Tommy Austin is 87. He is on track, if not already, the greatest Australian football ever. We have got some insane players. We could genuinely have a crack at a Champions League title this year if our players, if our star players carry us. Niang getting up to a 78 as well, which is awesome. Marrera up to a 73. I want to see how the lads went though. I put out on low. No growth there for Barlow. Only a plus one for Chris Canning. Charlie Neal, Craig Neal, sorry, up to a 76. No growth for De Silva. Adams up to an 81. Kelsen, no growth. It's really a mixed bag here. Kaiser, up to an 86. No growth for Edgar Fournier. One for, um, okay, it's def, yeah, it's a mixed bag for sure. But at the end of the season, we are going to be saying goodbye here to Sammy Clark as well. Roll on season number eight and the Champions League knockout rounds. We have just found ourselves maybe our best free agent signing to date. I was struggling to find an attacking midfielder, so I thought, let's try finding some center midfielders. Maybe they can play attacking midfield. And that is exactly what happens here. A 16 year old Belgian center midfielder who is 80 overall from the jump. We've signed him as a free agent. It is Victor Matthew joining us here. 80 overall at 16 years of age can play attacking midfield. Maybe, just maybe, it's Kevin De Bruyne's regen. I mean, you see that there. Let's see how long it takes to convert him. We could also convert him to a right midfield. Oh, 29 weeks. How about attacking mid? 23 weeks. Weeks. Oh, do I go for it or do I just change up the formation? Or is he just destined to be a center midfielder? He honestly, he's too rapid though. Let's just keep him as a center midfielder and change up this formation. Oh my God, the answer? The answer has been under my nose this entire time. Jackson Pierce, two weeks to be an attacking midfielder. All right, Jackson Pierce is the answer. Matthew's going in at center mid. I will say though, we need to just keep giving ourselves succession plans. Every year we need to find somebody who could take the starting roles. We've found this Spaniard, Castillo. His value goes down, which isn't great, but we have signed the young Spaniard from Dundee FC for 13 million pounds. And immediately I'm throwing
throwing him up on the loan list. But this season could be anything. We add Maddie to the mix. Pierce goes up to attacking midfield and an 84. I'm not going to say it would be a Cinderella run because we've got some of the world's best players in our squad. But could we win a Champions League with this Dublin team in our third Champions League attempt? Borussia Dortmund are the first hurdle in our way. Champions League round of 16 at home here. Here we go go against Dortmund it is a 3-1 win all right we might actually we might actually be the real deal here 3-1 let's not bottle it when we head to the Signal Iduna Park we've been absolutely humping the Irish League in our past two games in this simulation we've won 4-0 and 3-0 currently enter this game against Dortmund 3-1 up can we continue that trend we do not we actually lose to Borussia Dortmund but because of our strong first leg performance we are into the quarterfinals Matthew and King though yellow cards i'm hoping they're not suspended they are not perfect 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 oh dear lord we have got manchester city manchester city all right if we win this then i'm gonna be really confident but why couldn't we get to lou first leg away at the eddie had here here goes nothing i'm just jumping straight into this one and it is a one-all draw a one-all draw niang scores in the third minute all right that is actually huge all right all right let's focus in for this second leg at home we pick up a draw with manchester city we're at home and we are in a great position here to shock the world and get ourselves into a semi-final. Come on, Dublin. Come on, Dublin. Come on, Dublin. It is... Oh, my God. That is a heroic performance. To Austin, the Australian. Austin scores a goal that sends it to extra time in the 89th minute and then scores us the winner in the 96th minute. We... Okay, I've gone from thinking maybe this could be a Cinderella run to thinking we can win a Champions League title here. That is incredible. Build the statue for Austin. And in the semifinals, we get drawn up with a team that is quite familiar to us. It is our group stage opponents in Arsenal. How did we go when we versed them? We lost 2-1 against them on the 9th of October. And we lost 2-1 against them on the 4th of December. No, we beat them 2-1. Okay, so this could be quite even. After beating Manchester City, though, in the semifinals, anything is possible. Champions League semi-finals. We need Kusi Asare. We need Austin Pierce King. All these guys to step up again. Come on, Dublin. Come on, Dublin. It is a 1-0 loss. It is a 1-0 loss in the first leg at home. So we're going to have to go to the Emirates here and pull off a huge result. We just need to focus on getting the goal here. Get the goal, make it 1-0, send it to extra time, and then anything could happen. Away at the Emirates against Arsenal. Oh my god. We get a goal, but but we don't get the first one. And Arsenal have beaten us in the Champions League semi-finals. So damn close, lads. We need to build as much as humanly possible, though, to have a run next year. I am still upset about going out in the semis. We were so damn close to our goal, but we are still laying the foundations here halfway through the season. And Arsenal ended up winning the Champions League, which makes me feel a lot better about how we went. PSG win the Europa League, and Hoffenheim win the conference league but as we get ourselves ready to go again for another champions league campaign i'm gonna make a signing here in the summer transfer window ibrahim coffee left midfielder from the ivory coast 70 overall we are gonna pay 3.1 million pounds to bring him in and i mean marseille have a great track record when it comes to young ivory coast players so i don't expect us to get the next didier drogba but it would be nice and yes, I know they play different positions. It's just the overall rhetoric of it all. After getting to the semi-finals last year, it almost feels redundant having to go to the qualifying rounds, but we can't take this lightly. We could slip up and find ourselves not even getting to the group stages this year. We've got Molder first. Let's come in swinging. Greco is suspended for the first leg, so I've moved Anderson to the right back position. Carizzo comes in. Lay the foundations. Big win, please. It's a 1-0 loss. Oh my God. In a season where we can literally we can win the champions league this year all right we're one deal down against Mulder. sort it out lads sort it out this could be a genuine nightmare fellas this could be the worst case scenario we need to beat Mulder and we need to beat them well we do oh my god that is way too close oh my god okay we are through. Austin scores in the 13th. Kusi Asari sends it to extra time. Austin gives us the lead. They bring it back. King gets a straight red card. But then our left back, Cardoso, in the 100th 
and 19th minute saves this one from going to a penalty shootout. We beat Molder 4-2, 4-3 on aggregate. That is way too much drama for the Champions League prelim preliminary round or whatever it is, the qualifying round. So that means King is going to be suspended for the first leg of this playoff round against Brakal. We can, we need a big foot. We need to win the first leg, man. I don't want the, I don't want the stress. We can deal with the stress when it comes to the knockout rounds, when we're versing the Man Cities and the Arsenals of the world. Not in the qualifying rounds. So Pierce is going to move into the center midfield role. Sanchez into the attacking midfield role for the first leg. We get a 3-1 win. Back to regular programming here. 3-1 up. Do not stuff this up, lads. Get us to the group stages. Perfect. No yellow cards. Perfect, perfect, perfect. A lot less stressful than the last ones. We're in another tough group. I think it should just become the expectation every year that we're going to get drawn into a group of death, but we are with Shakhtar Donetsk again this year. Atletico Madrid and Roma are the other two sides. Just like last year, we need to take every game 100% serious and get ourselves back to the knockout rounds. All I care about is getting out of the group. I would have been, I would have thought we could have a crack at trying to win it this year, but we're through. That's all that matters. We tie on points with Roma, but we get ahead of them on goal difference. We're into the knockout rounds. Are we going to have Dortmund again? No, we're going to have Liverpool. Last year's Champions League finalist. We've got Liverpool. Couldn't get Salzburg. We couldn't get, I mean, there's not really any easy teams remaining here are there standard procedure though we don't do it as comfortably as the past few years but 18 i guess 18 points clear is still pretty comfort comfortable all i want is just another irish league cup it is it is not happening for us right now we lose the saint pats in the semi-finals another huge year jonah kusi i'm so glad that we missed out on getting that guy in what season three and we managed to get jonah he's now 92 rated 27 goals but tommy austin is quickly becoming a hero here. He's rocking the captain's armband. Tommy Austin, 23 goals, 91 overall. Niang gets himself 26 goal contributions. He has to be. He has to be the Saudio Mane regen. We will be saying goodbye though to two more players who start our final two players that started with us. Kian Moore and Harry O'Connor will be leaving on freeze. I'm fired up, lads. Season number nine is here and I'm getting straight into the Champions League and knockout rounds. We need to get ourselves a champion. Champions League title this year. I'm ready for it. Kusio Sare's 93 rated. He would have to be a Ballon d'Or favorite at this point. We're at home against Liverpool and we get a 3-1 win in the first leg. Oh my God. I thought maybe I was coming in a little too cocky, but a 3-1 win against Liverpool. Come on. All right, let's now make sure we don't bottle it. 3-1 up. As we head into the belly of the beast, we head to Anfield against the Reds. The scoreline, one all draw. Matthew gets the yellow card though. I was hoping I saw no cards. He might be suspended, but I don't care because we are through to the Champions League quarterfinals with a massive scalp in Liverpool. And yep, there it is. Victor Matthew, the Belgian midfielder, suspended for the first leg of the quarters. And the quarterfinals are going to see us taking on a juggernaut of world football. It is PSG. Killing and Mbappe and co against UCD Dublin. Imagine you've got to go to class on like a Monday and then you've got to verse PSG in a Champions League quarterfinal on the Tuesday. You no know, Matthew for the first leg is a massive blow. We are at we are at home here. We're on campus for the first leg against PSG, which we win 2-0. Now, nah, Kusia Sare is actually a beast. He bags a brace against PSG. And without one of our star midfielders, we still get ourselves a 2-0 lead to take back to Paris. This season is going brilliantly, but again, I don't want to jinx it. 2-0 is the most dangerous scoreline in football. PSG have goals galore in them. Let's hope they can't find them this game. Second leg in Paris. <gasps> oh my god. We, I don't know what noise just came out of my mouth. We are in on aggregate. Holy crap. Okay, PSG found the goals. We found the goals, but we win 5-4 on aggregate. Oh my, so many yellow cards, but oh my, Garnacho almost just destroyed us there. Garnacho and Sule, the Argentinians, 
get PSG four goals. But we're back to the Champions League semi-finals on a 5-4 aggregate. Mate, I'm still in shock after that, after that second leg against PSG, but we now have to focus up. Last year, we lost to an English side in Arsenal in the Champions League semis. This year, we face another English side. It is Chelsea, Napoli, and Real Madrid, even in their semi-final. But we need to focus on getting ourselves to the final this year. We've been really strong in our first legs this season. Well, strong in the knockout rounds, not so strong in the qualifying campaigns. But if we could get another two goal advantage to take back to Dublin and leave Stamford Bridge with, that would be awesome. It's a one goal lead. I'll take it. I'll take it. Austin gets a goal. Austin gets a yellow card. I'm hoping that Austin will be here for the second leg at home. No, he will not. We're going to be without Tommy Austin for the second leg against Chelsea, which is probably the biggest blow we could have, which is going to see one of the early heroes of this video get an opportunity in a Champions League semi-final. It is Watts entering the starting 11. Big shoes to fill. One goal lead for a spot in a Champions League final. We do it 2-0. Come on, lads. Kusi Asare bags a brace. Cole Palmer gets a straight red for Chelsea. And we are heading to a Champions League final where we're going to be facing either Napoli or Real Madrid. All right, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. I'm actually jazzed. I am jazzed up for this one. We're in the Champions League final here in 2031 with the world's youngest squad where we're going to be versing Napoli. At this point, we're not even halfway through the season, but we have a 21-point advantage and we are undefeated with Dublin with a game in hand over St. Pat's as well. That is absolutely crook. But I cannot wait for this Champions League final, lads. We have picked up some absolute superstars here and I can't wait to see this team in action. It is a Champions League final where we're versing Napoli. It's the scene of the Euro 2024 final in a couple weeks time but can we make this our place where we find the glory the olympia stadion can we win a champions league title with dublin here also quickly have you guys heard about the city in europe that keeps getting bigger every year yeah it's dublin all right let's go lose this final <laughs> and go on a shot there straight at our german keeper kaiser good tackle greco but it falls right to them i'm smothering what is going on here Good block, Anderson. Trying to get the one-two going. That's a great back heel. It's our left back, Cardoso. I'm just going to go with the left back. Hits it straight at Murich. Gets in there. Keeper stays on his line. It's all cleared off the line. Kusia Sare got so much power behind that. Somehow it doesn't find the back of the net. Be smart here, fellas. Going out wide. All right, let's put this one through. That's a great ball. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. The defender's in two minds and we blow it wide. What am I doing? That was the opportunity. Oh, there it is, fellas. We can't get the breakthrough. Nobody gets the breakthrough, and we're off to extra time. Come on. Pick him apart here. King. Oh, why did I do that? Austin. 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 That's why I did it. It's Tommy bloody Austin, the Aussie hero himself. Gives us the lead here. King puts it on a platter for him. He hits the laces and puts it top corner. The benches are cleared. We've got the lead here in what has been a frustrating extra time. We have absolutely dominated possession, but I have just not had that final killer instinct until this moment. Now we've got to defend like our lives depend on it. One minute here. Just make a tackle and get rid of it. No, they're fed it through. What a save. No follow up. Defend, defend, block, get to it. Come on. Oh my God. That is such a clutch way to end this. We are going to win a Champions League title with UCD. The college team have done it, lads, at the Olympia Stadion. Oh, my God, what a crazy end. Look, I know Tommy Austin had the captain's armband at the end of last season, but Joshua King has had it since day one, just about. He's been in this team since the early days. He has been one of our heroes. Joshua King is going to be the man who lifts the Champions League title here with the world's youngest team, UCD Dublin. Lads, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to check out another video.